because you know they are in time this is the realm of time so there is a time for certain seed to not up. the seed of the spirit is not like no, no, no. the formation of christ in a man takes time takes what yes the formation of christ in a man takes time and until you are ready to give god time you are not ready to allow Christ to be what? To be formed in you. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, the difference between you and your neighbor is not just because you are going to church. What will differentiate you is what? The image of Christ that you have where? In you. Praise the Lord. You know, one of my brothers was ministry the other time and he said, Christ in you, the hope of God. The hope of God. The reason many people will be disappointed is not because they don't have hope. Are you there? It's because the hope they have does not have a substance. Are you there? The substance of your hope must be glory. Are you there? So until Christ is formed, you don't have the hope of what? Of glory. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, the, the, the glory that is in a man is resting on the image of Christ that is in that what? In that man. So, a man that does not have Christ fully formed in him does not have what? Glory. Are you getting it? Are you getting what I'm saying? Let's open our Bible book of Galatians chapter 4. Media, you can help us. Galatians chapter 4. From verse 1. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a woman, is a child. Yes? Different nothing from a woman. From a child. Though he be lord of what? What defines spiritual maturity is the formation of Christ. Are you there? It is the formation of Christ in a man that defines what? Spiritual what? Maturity. Are you getting what I'm saying? And until Christ is formed in you, you are not mature. You are not what? I don't care, you may be 60 years old, but according to God's definition, a man is not matured until Christ is what? Is what? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, this is the problem of being a child. If you are a child, you are nothing different from a what? A servant. Even when you are Lord of God. What does that mean? What we give you the the stature to be able to possess all that you have in Christ is maturity. So it is possible for kids to be walking on foot. Are you there? And the servant riding on what? Horses. It's possible. You see. Many of us we will never see reasons to press deeper into God until your eyes is open to see who you are in who? In God. Are you there? Until you know who you are in God, you will not know who God is to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Until you are able to see who you are in God, you will not know who God is. So what? you. So, he is the Lord of all, yet he is nothing different from a what? A servant because he is not spiritually mature. Verse 2. Verse 2. But he is under what? Tutors and what? God knows until the time appointed of the world. Father. Like I said earlier, the formation of Christ 
in a man takes what? Time. Many of us, we have one time submitted ourselves to the dealings of God, but we did not complete the process. At the long run, you escaped because you felt the burden was too heavy on you. Are you there? Please pay attention. If you go to your generation with an incomplete image of Christ, are you there? You will still be a disaster. You will still be a what? Now, if you look at the structure of a man, you have the head, am I right? You have the hand, right? You have the leg, and you have other parts, am I right? In the formation of Christ, in a man, everything happens systematically. Are you there? As you are now, the, all what may be formed in you may be the leg. Are you there? So if all that is formed in you is the leg, you will discover you want to go out, you want to go and preach. Are you there? You want to go out, you want to go and do things for Christ. But yet you still discover that there are still some things you cannot want. You cannot do. Until Christ is fully formed, you will not come into the fullness of God. You will not come into the world. Let me show us something. I think tomorrow we are going to we are going to go deeper into, into the message. Let me just speak to you by the Spirit of God. Let me speak from my, from my spirit. May they please let's go to the book of um, Ephesians chapter chapter 3. So tomorrow we'll do deep study into the concept of Christ being formed. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 17 to 18. Praise the Lord. that love is not a thing. Love is not an activity. Love is not an opponent. Love is a word. It's a person. So the scripture says God is what? Love. Please be attentive to this. If you will allow Christ to be formed in you, you must learn to listen to God more than men. Are you there? Who you listen to defines the image that is formed in you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Who you are, you listen to uh -huh, defines the image that is formed in you. So, if you want Christ to be formed in you, give more attention to who? To Christ. Hallelujah. One of those spiritual tests is love. Are you with me? So the Bible says God is love. Are you there? And the world tells us that love is blind. Have you heard that before? The word says love is what? You know where I'm going? Okay. 
Is it true? Because God is no plan. See, until you know God, you don't know. Are you there? Until you know God, you don't know. You can say it. You may even try to act it, but you cannot be it. You cannot what? You can say it, you can try to act it, but your act will not mean it. Because you don't have that person called God. No. Let me show you something deep about God. Uh-huh. That Christ uh-huh, may dwell where? In your heart by what? By what? That ye, yes, being rooted and what? In what? Now, before law, before you can be grounded in law, Christ must first dwell in you, what? Richly. Christ must first be grounded where? In you. Are you with me? Okay. Please, not this way though. Being rooted and grounded in law, verse 18. Now, after you have been rooted and grounded in law, yes, may be able to what? Comprehend with all says what is the breadth, yes, length, depth, and height. Can I shock you? That thing you call law has length, it has breadth, it has height. It has dead. Eh? I wish I can get a white board. I will draw. We will now label the next day. Eh? Now let me let me show you something. Mathematically, height is equal to depth. Are you there? So if we go by mathematics, it means that. Though four things are mentioned here, but they are actually three. So we can call it a three dimensional shape. Now, let's pick Q boy as an example length, breadth, height. I want to explain something to you now. Remember, law has length, breadth, and height. Am I right? You see, our capacity to display law is not the same thing. Because your length may be different from my own length. Are you getting what I'm saying? The volume of a cuboid is length and breadth and height. So if your length is two, your breadth is two, your height is two, by the time we find the volume, what do you have? Eight. Are you getting what I'm saying? Well, another person has larger what? Good. Let me give you, when they mention breadth, breadth has to do with wideness. Are you there? Now that has to do with the scope of the law. So when we say the breadth of law, we are talking about the scope of what? Of the law. Is it limited? Some people say, I will love you for as long as you still have your job. The moment you lose your job, I stop loving you. What does that mean? That love does not have a eh, breadth. Are you getting what I'm saying? It does not have what? Now, if somebody loves you because of your round leg, if anything happens and maybe you have to stay on the chair for a month to recover, what do you think will happen to that love? Huh? The length talks about the longness, and that has to do with time. Are you there? Love has length because it works with what? God has loved the world because, you know, God has loved the world before we came. Are you there? And after we came, the love still what? Continue. That's a love that has what? Less. Then the, the, the death talks about your ability to endure and tolerate. Your ability to what? 
to endure and what? Anyone that continually uh, find fault in what you do does not deserve you. You get it? Anyone that continually do what? Find fault in what you do is not made for you. Because it will mean that that love does not have what? Death. Then lastly, it has height. Are you there? Height has to do with the quality of the law. The what? The quality of the law. Is it God's kind of law or is it a carnal law? Are you getting what I'm saying? Is it what? Is it a God kind of law or what? What we were praying the other time, the Holy Spirit brought a question to me. And he said, I should ask you. He said, Are you the one who should expect another? That's the question your generation will come and ask you. Are you the one that is coming to save us? Or should we want to expect you? I was speaking to my sister there one day. She came and we were talking. I told her, I said, a time will come that your generation will become thirsty. Are you there? And they will come to your well to come and drink. What will they find? Will they find water in your well in that day? Huh? Will they find water in your well or the well will be dry? That is why we gather here. That is why we are laboring. So that Christ can be what? Notice this. Until Christ is formed, you don't have what it takes to be a blessing to a generation. Are you there? Until Christ is formed in you, you don't have what? You will not have what it takes to be a what? To be a blessing to a generation. your assignment to you starting from that point you begin to work with a sense of responsibility are you getting what I'm saying? you begin to work with what? a sense of what? of responsibility now God was speaking to me one day I think that was last two weeks and he began to teach me one of the things that helped Jesus how do you know Jesus came as a man? you know he can sleep the way we sleep. Are you getting it? So, at what point did Jesus begin to align with the will of the Father? Is it just that he came and is 100% spirit? Huh? No. When God wants you to align with his purpose, the first thing he, he gives to you is a consciousness. Is a what? Yes. It's a consciousness, a kind of knowing that there is something you are called to do. A consciousness of responsibility will first come to you. Are you there? It is that consciousness that will now draw you to a place of what? Of preparation. Let me give you an example. In the book of Matthew, the Bible now reveals that and Jesus was led by the Spirit into where? Into where? That was the place of what? Of preparation. Now my question is, do you have the consciousness 
of your assignment? Are you working with that consciousness? Do you have that knowing that there is something God actually wants you to do? That's somebody close to you. Your generation is waiting for you. Your generation is waiting for you. It is time to shine as light. Hallelujah. Do all you can to ensure that Christ is forming you. I get what I'm saying. I told you initially, I said, who you listen to is what defines what is what formed in you. And the image that is formed in you is what defines your spiritual capacity. Are you there? Many people cannot do much because they don't have much. You can't do beyond your capacity. You can't do beyond your what? Your capacity. We hope that tomorrow we are going to have enough time to, to do our study. We did a lot of prayers today. But our time is fast. Can we bow our heads and pray to God and say, Father, give me a consciousness that will produce a responsibility in me. Give me a consciousness. You know they are in time. This is the realm of time. So there is a time for certain seed to nurture. The seed of the spirit is not like animal crop. No, no, no. A seed can take.